As NSA leaker Edward Snowden continues his one-month layover at a Moscow airport, he's waiting on the Russian government to consider his application for permanent political asylum. And his U.S. passport is invalid. Snowden is, to say the least, a special case, but one that raises some interesting questions, like what happens when the U.S. government revokes someone's passport? According to a State Department official, the information is shared through various databases that reach immigration authorities worldwide. Edward Snowden had his passport revoked by the State Department, yet managed to fly from Hong Kong to Moscow. It remains unclear how that was allowed. He's been offered asylum in Venezuela, Bolivia, and Nicaragua, but with no passport, he hasn't been able to fly to any of those countries. How does someone get back to the U.S. even if their passport's been revoked? The State Department says he or she can be provided a limited validity passport, vowed only for a direct return to the United States. How often does the U.S. revoke passports? The State Department tells the Wall Street Journal it revokes 1,500 to 2,000 passports per year. It can do so when someone's wanted for a crime in the U.S. or their passport obtained fraudulently. Snowden says the Obama administration has left him stateless. But is Snowden really a man without a country? Not according to the U.S. State Department, whose spokesperson says Snowden has a country to return to, which is the United States of America. Renouncing U.S. citizenship requires appearing before a U.S. consular or diplomatic officer in a foreign country. Lawyers would probably advise against his paying a visit to the U.S. Embassy for this purpose, even if he could. That would be the equivalent of stepping foot on U.S. soil, and that means he could be arrested. Snowden's days in the international terminal might soon be over, but his final destination is still quite uncertain. That's the short answer.